What's up everyone and welcome back to Top 5 Central. Have you ever heard the saying that celebrities are almost treated like gods in certain cultures? Well, it turns out YouTubers and celebrities are, well, also just normal human beings that have to follow the law as well. So today we're looking at five YouTubers who got banned from countries. Now, if you've ever broken a law before, leave a like on the video and comment what it was. I already know we got the most savage people who don't use crosswalks watching this video, so don't try to lie. But with that said, let's get right into it. Number five, Logan Paul. Logan Paul has never been afraid of drama, everybody knows that, but it seems like in the last few months, he's totally pushed things over the edge. I mean, not only did he manage to offend basically everyone who saw his Japanese Suicide Forest video, but he's also been completely banned from the country for a completely different reason. That's right, even though Japanese police said the Suicide Forest vlog was very upsetting and offensive, it didn't actually break any laws, but his other Japan vlogs are a whole other story. Like according to the Japanese cops, the videos are evidence that he broke a ton of laws while in the country, including public indecency and destruction of property, as well as an insane amount of traffic violations. Obviously after everything, the police aren't too keen on him returning to the country, and now they basically made it clear he's banned. Because if he ever shows up again, he'll be immediately arrested. So uh, I guess now he'll have to find another vacation spot, and maybe not run around throwing fish on people's cars and destroying game consoles this time. First one is going to be about Logan Paul because some big news just came out from the Japanese police or former police detectives because one site ended up actually contacting some former well-known Japanese police and they are now saying that Logan Paul will be in big trouble and he's going to be wanted by Japan if he goes back. That's right, this is a huge deal. Um, It says in the article that Japanese cops say Logan Paul videos broke the law and they just love to nail him. Now, as you guys know, the big news from Logan Paul was that he filmed the dead body in the Japanese suit. Now, the thing is, is the other vlogs that Logan Paul posted in Japan while he was like, you know, disrespecting people, throwing stuff at people's cars, doing all these crazy things, those videos are just straight up evidence of him breaking the law in Japan. And he literally has those uploaded to his YouTube channel. So it makes it very easy for the Japanese police to actually catch him here. And it says here in the article that by filming the dead man, Paul gave a huge offense to many people, not only in Japan, but he probably didn't violate any criminal laws. The clips he's posted since are a different matter. Japanese police officers who have seen his videos taken in Japan found at least four crimes that he could be charged with. Destruction of property, public indecency, interference with business operations, and numerous traffic violations. Plus, he's left video evidence on his own YouTube channel, said a former police detective. We haven't seen such a dumb criminal since those idiots uploaded videos of themselves bullying a convenience store clerk and stealing cigarettes in 2014. So Number 4. Combi Life Now Ben basically travels for a living, which means he's pretty used to dealing with awkward visas and passport trouble. With that said, sometimes things screw up so badly that even he can't do anything about it, and this screw up happened at the worst possible time for him. The quick version is, the normal vehicle he uses to get around broke down in Alaska, so he had to fly home to Jersey and Europe while he figured out what to do next. I mean, he had a clean British passport, which meant he could get back to the States for 90 days, but he decided to apply for an even longer visa. You know, just in case his video project overran and he needed more time. So it sounds legit, right? Well, it should have been, but for some reason, the US rejected his request for a longer visa. Not just that, but they even took away his right to the normal 90 days, even though he had never been in trouble before in his life. Honestly, it makes no sense, and even he had no idea why it happened, but there was nothing he could do. So I guess the moral of this list is that it's actually not that hard to get banned from a country, even if you're doing everything right. I really cannot believe what has just happened. I'm in shock. Just been to the US visa, queued up for hours and hours and hours, paid like 200 pounds for the privilege, plus hundreds of pounds to get here and spend the time in London. And they said, no. They said, no, you can't have a visa. And not only that, we're gonna like take away your normal rights to a, a three month visa. So I can't, I literally, I don't even think I can go Denied to this me a visa, which means that I'm no longer allowed to visit America at all. I'm not allowed to go back and get my bus, which is waiting for me. Um, and I'm not allowed to actually explore Alaska after four years of driving there, which is absolutely heartbreaking. Ben Skyped with me from Jersey, an island off the coast of France, to share the news. And because I've been away so long, they, I, they think that I've cut ties and I'm now a threat to 
US immigration, like I, I might try and actually live in the States. Since Number three, Roosh V. Okay, so it turns out you don't always have to act in an extreme way to get banned from the country you're living in. In fact, sometimes just saying things is enough to get you kicked out. Basically, Roosh has built a pretty committed following because of his political opinions, which includes things like the fact that he doesn't think women should be allowed to vote. Now, whether you agree with him or not, having an unpopular opinion isn't usually enough to get you banned from a country. With that said, he did try to host a meetup with some of his fans, and that caused so much anger and backlash that I guess it got him noticed by the government. Anyway, the UK Prime Minister looked into him and decided what he was doing was enough to deport him. Because it technically counted as spreading material that caused hatred and could lead to violence in the community. Now, he wasn't happy about being told to leave, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't really know what to think. Like, this dude has said publicly that he wants rape to be legal and that gay people should not exist in society. But does that mean he should be banned from the UK? Let me know what you guys think in the comments, because that's a really big struggle between free speech and hate speech. I just found out today that I am banned from England for three to five years. Can you believe that? It's not for anything I've done. I didn't organize in England. I didn't maintain dialogues with revolutionaries there. But because of my ideas, because of things I've written, I am banned. It turns out that I was actually banned in 2016. Number two, Nico Cotto Avocado. So most people on this list have been banned from a country for doing something wrong, and this is kind of similar because the dude definitely broke the law. With that said, it's really hard not to feel bad for him because he literally just made an honest mistake. Basically, he moved to Colombia on a tourist visa to live with his partner, and the two of them applied for a marriage visa so they could stay in the country together as a couple for as long as they wanted. The thing is, after his tourist visa ran out, he decided to stay in the country since there was such little time before the verdict about his new visa would come through. Unfortunately, the Colombian government found out about it and decided that made the marriage visa completely unacceptable, so they rejected it. Not just that, but they even essentially branded him as an illegal and told them he was going to be immediately deported and wouldn't be allowed back in for a really long time. Honestly, it's a pretty heartbreaking story because even though he admitted he broke the law, he's also now being split up from his family over a simple misunderstanding. I personally think it's super messed up, so if you guys want to go support him and let him know we send you, that'd be awesome. You know, just tell me now. Essentially, I am being forced to leave. The 25th is when my visa expires. Okay, so there's this law in Colombia. You can only stay 180 days at a time in this country. I've been here for 250. And we applied for the marriage visa. We couldn't apply for a marriage visa until five months. We've been married for seven months. April is when we got married. So May, June, July, August, September, October. It's now six months. We applied last month in September. And we finally got our results after applying for the visa. And they rejected me to be able to live with me. They gave me two days to leave the country. Or I go to jail. Or I pay a fine. It's this new law that they passed recently. Number one, Drew is sharing. Now getting banned from a country when you've done something wrong is fair enough, but when it's border control that's actually made the mistake, it's gotta suck even more. I mean, Drusif has been to the US a ton of times, but he got banned in 2016 literally because of an admin error. I'm not joking, basically he went to security when one of the machines wasn't working, so he had to go speak to someone who was working there face to face. The thing is, they decided to do a deep dive into his history for some reason and found out that he had overstayed his visa two trips ago. Now that would be fine if it was true, but that actually never happened since he changed his state to the legal max of 90 days when he got to the border, but they hadn't changed it on the record. So because of that one tiny mistake, he was banned from the country and his day just got worse from there. How? Well, there were no flights back to the UK, so he had to spend the night in a detention center, get taken to the ER due to a huge panic attack, and then eventually fly back home late. Not what you want when you're just planning on going on vacation, is it? 
problem, but still. What they sort of saw was that two trips ago, I had overstayed my Esther by one day. Now, I didn't overstay my Esther for one day. I actually originally booked it for 91 days. I didn't look at it and I, I wasn't thinking straight. And then I got to the, the airport and they told me I had to rebook it because I wouldn't be allowed in the country for 91 days. So I've changed it and it was to 90 days and I was allowed. Apparently on their system, it still has that I stayed there for 91 days, even though I, I legally wouldn't have been able to leave Heathrow Airport if I booked my thing for 91 days. So, and it was two trips ago. The last trip I did nothing happened I, I went straight through so I'm, I'm detained I'm questioned for like two hours and after I'm detained for two hours they say look we can't let you into the country we're not letting you in um, I have this I have this stamp on the back of my passport refused uh, in accordance with the section thing saying that I cannot go into the fucking United States <laughs> I wouldn't be too pissed off yet if I'd been able to just go home. There were no flights going back to the UK that day. I have to stay overnight. And there's a video on the top five YouTubers who got banned from countries. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like down below and subscribe to see when I upload a video. Also, if you're on top five or top 10 idea, feel free to use your Kimmy Handy form in the description to submit it. With that said, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.